for taking out, uh, taking time out of your Saturday to join us to celebrate the marriage of Daniel and Alina and the love that they share as they embark on the next chapter of their lives. You know, I never actually thought that this day would happen. <laughs> Genuinely, I, I didn't think that this day would happen. Um, but here I am, here you are, and here they are. Of course, I can be a little sister and poke fun at my big brother and say I never thought he had enough game to actually get a girl, which is true, I do think that. But I also mean that in the most wholesome and purest way. Growing up with one sibling in life, you're never truly prepared for your partner in crime to grow up one day and leave you. <laughs> I think five years ago is when it really started to hit me. Life as I knew it was going to change forever when I watched Dono pack his bags and move to the other side of the country to elevate his career and pursue an amazing growth opportunity. Being alone with mom and dad made me miss him a lot. Don't get me wrong, I have the best parents in the world. <laughs> Being alone with them was great. The focus was finally back on me, how I like it. <laughs> But him leaving home left me a little unsettled. Nobody was around to tell me unsolicited fun facts about the Soviet Union, insight on the most recent economic recession, or force me to watch a documentary that analyzed Kim Jong-un's childhood to depict why he turned out to be such a scumbag. My brother's absence was sad for me, but also a blessing because he has accomplished so much in the last few years while he's been away in Alberta. One of the best accomplishments while he was in Alberta, in my opinion though, is meeting Alina and deciding to make her his happily ever after. Alina, you are a beautiful human and have a kind soul and your relationship with my brother is special because you two are best friends first, partners second. This is a formula for success that takes some people a lifetime to figure out. So, spoiler alert, you guys are ahead of the game. Daniel, you're a nerd, <laughs> but you're my favorite nerd in the world, and I hope you'll always keep me close and be my best friend forever. I hate being sappy, so I'm here to remind you guys of the real relationship between Samia and Daniel. Because we're never, ever sappy, ever. We are goofy, we're loud, we beat each other up, we are very actually turn the next page. So I, I stopped my speech at story time. So as I mentioned to you guys, we're not sappy. I know I shed a mini tear there, but we're not sappy. We make fun of each other. We're just, we're just a really interesting pair. So short story, since Donald is the eldest by six years, he always got to do things first. He got to learn how to write first, to learn how to read first, drive a car, ride a bike, all of those things. As a kid, I watched fuming because I wanted to participate too. But my mom wanted to make sure Daniel got the attention he deserved, rightfully so. So one time, as Daniel and my mom were reading out loud, I poked him in the eye with a pencil in the hopes that he would let me read too. So here we see a photo of just that, and I'm going to illustrate this for you guys. So here we see my mother feeding him this delicious cake that she baked him because she felt bad for him that I poked his eye. And um, there we see Daniel looking upset like a pirate with a patch on his eye. And there I am just watching really proud of my work. Now, my mom may have baked my brother a cake, but I don't want you guys to get confused. I am the favorite child. This is a fact and everybody knows it. I've dedicated years of my life trying to get my mom and dad to admit this, and they usually say it in secret, but nobody actually hears it. But this time around, I have proof. 
So here, we see my father posing on a beach with me. He wrote, Samia is my fave kid in the sand and asked me to pose with him. It took some convincing, but I finally complied and I snapped a picture for him. Oh, Dad, you're such a hoot. So, to end off, I just wanted to say that this picture of Donald... Oh, you. This picture of Donald was before I was born. <laughs> and his fascination with beauty products started much before I arrived in the world. Um, and continued even after I was born. So fast forward to now, he steals all my expensive foundations, creams, shampoos, and serums. So thank you for being the sister I never had. <laughs> all jokes aside though, Donnell, you're the best brother a girl can ask for, and you've taught me a lot about life. You don't care what other people think, and have helped me live fearlessly and unapologetically as the person I am. You've taught me about uniqueness and learning how to be comfortable in my own skin, and that's something that a lot of people can't confidently say, so I wanted to thank you for that. You're the smartest person I know, and you're my role model, regardless of if you live across the country or if you're back home in Mississauga. Getting to know you over the last few years, Alina, I can confidently say that you and Donnell are the perfect pair. Thank you for being so kind and loving to him. I don't know how you're going to deal with him, but he's your problem now. <laughs> Thank you. So I had time to set up and to her first apartment. It was her and me and my brother's pickup truck. And we fit almost everything except the bed, the bookshelf, and the desk into that pickup truck. And then we drove all the way across Edmonton into an apartment building that didn't have a working elevator. And her apartment was at the end of the hallway. So up four flights of stairs went about 16 bags of textbooks. <laughs> Why does this woman need so many textbooks? <laughs> Pounds of books. <laughs> Do you know how much she can lift? A cat. <laughs> So why does this woman have a metric ton of science, nutrition, and medical textbooks? Because she's brilliant and has two degrees. That's why. Yeah. Woo. So anyhow, that was a fun day. <laughs> but there's been many fun days. Many days, many kilometers put on as we wandered around West Edmonton Mall when Alina lived on the west end of Edmonton. There's been holiday par dinners with my parents and my younger brother, and a memorable New Year's Eve when Alina got lost trying to find my parents' house and got introduced to the concept of hot oil fondue. Ask her about turkey sometime. <laughs> there's, uh, there's been trips to Ikea and the discovery that you can in fact fit a six foot long mirror in a Pontiac Sunfire coupe. And you can also fit me and Alina and my fiance in the same car. <laughs> I'm really, really good at vehicle Tetris. We've had long chats on the couch, drinking tea, discussing cats and school, jobs, politics, families, and a lot of food. There's been time spent at the pool, swimming laps, and the memorable adventure on a bicycle. There's been barbecues in my backyard, and smaller parties at her place. Dinners and lunches out, afternoons spent in each other's company, pictures and videos spent back and forth. And while she and I, and I and her, are very different people, it's the similarities that have kept us close, and the differences that always give us something to talk about. Over these seven years, I've gotten to know Alina pretty well. I know she's resilient. I know she's funny. I know she loves her cat more than anyone else in the world, except maybe Dan. I know she's stubborn and determined, and I know she loves fiercely. I know she's passionate about her work, and I know she owns up to her faults and puts in the effort to work past them. I know she's a good, I know she's a great friend. I know she's there when she need her, when you need her. When I'm spending time with Alina, it's like I'm spending time with a tornado made of sunshine. High energy, pulls you into the fun, makes you laugh. 
whereas my usual spot is hiding under a rock away from people. Alina, this day is about you and about Dan and about your happily ever after. You two know what the most important thing today was. You stood up there together and you said your vows, promising to go forward in life and to love each other with your whole selves. I don't think it's physically possible for me to be happier for you in this moment. So that all that's left for me to say is congratulations. So today, Alina and I join your life to yours, not merely as your husband, but as your friend, your lover, and your confidant. Let me be the shoulder to you lean on, the rock on which you rest, the companion of your life. I promise to encourage and inspire you to laugh with you and to comfort you in times of sorrow and struggle. I promise to love you in good times and in bad, when life seems easy and when life seems hard, when our love is simple and when it is an effort. I promise to cherish you and to always hold you in the highest regard. Uh, with you, I will walk my path from this day forward. Uh, some of you have recently had a chance to meet Alina, while uh, others have known Alina for long enough to really get to know her. Um, I'd like to share with you the Alina I know. When uh, I first met Alina, I knew she was different than any person I have ever met. We talked about every subject conceivable, and she was just as intellectually curious about the world around her in a nerdy and quirky way as I was. We could literally talk for hours on end. So to put things into perspective on our very first date, it was about seven hours long and all the lit candles on the table had burnt out and yet we still continued talking. And as a matter of fact, the restaurant owner was kind enough to let us stay past the close time and while he wrapped things up for the night. And it wasn't until he was ready to go home that we were asked to leave finally. So the next few dates were even longer in duration and the feeling that uh, Alina came uh, the, yeah, the feeling that uh, Alina came early and only grew stronger in time. Uh, now based on my life experience, the one thing that I know about people is that they reveal themselves in due time. Uh, people are complicated and they reveal themselves little by little uh, like uh, layers of an onion. People often put on their best fo face forth what we call impression management and in doing so it convolutes our perceptions of what people are really like. Uh, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. We all do it to some extent and we often do it without even consciously realizing it. To me, a quality I admire in others is endeavoring to truthfully reveal yourself to others. Uh, to be truthful even when it's inconvenient and uncomfortable. To be truthful even when it's advantageous to not be. To be truthful every day regardless of context. Uh, the Lena I know has this quality and it is evidence based on me knowing her for close to five years. Uh, she is not as we say in Urdu Jalak, which is defined as being cunning to achieve a, a desired end. Uh, in addition to being genuine and truthful, Alina has many other qualities that I feel make for a beautiful person. She's kind, considerate, compassionate towards everyone she comes across in her life, and thinks about how her decisions impact others. Uh, she treats my family with love and respect and truly holds them near and dear to her heart like it's her own family. These are some of the many qualities I fell in love with. I feel blessed to marry her and uh, be able to call her my wife. Uh, and I feel like she's someone that is beautiful for both from inside and outside. So you look beautiful today, Alina, and I'm so excited to marry you. <laughs> start our lives together as a husband and wife. I promise to be your devoted husband. I vow to lo love you when the sun shines, when the rain falls, in sickness and in health, through good times and bad. I promise to support you uh, in your dreams and to respect our differences and to love you and be by your side through all Coffee, the days and nights of our lives. This will take a little while. When Dan and I got engaged and started planning our wedding, we had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. Wedding planning, particularly when it's done across the country from another province, is a challenge, to say the least. I'm so proud of us, Dan, 
and I'm so grateful for the help of family and friends in helping us navigate this exciting but stressful time. We could not have done it without you. A big thank you to Daniel's parents for putting so much love into planning our Mendy while also juggling many other commitments this year. Najib and Nurjiz Kazmi have been the most supportive in-laws one could ask for during this busy period of our lives. We are really touched by the number of family and friends that have traveled across the country and some of you even international borders to be here with us today. Speaking of out-of-province guests, a huge thank you to Robin, Kristen, and Lauren, my bridesmaids, for those of you that don't know, for putting up with my Taipei tendencies during the planning process. And thank you, Samia, for helping us navigate both Western and Pakistani cultures in the planning details. I'm excited to finally have a sister. And of course, thank you for everyone's presence these last two days. Your presence is the greatest gift of all to us. And finally, I have to thank my now husband, Daniel, for keeping me sane during the wedding planning process. It's a good thing that a wedding inherently involves two people because things would have been infinitely more challenging without your exceptional research abilities and calm demeanor. And even though you weren't really keen on the planning details, I knew you'd appreciate how everything would come together the day of. As caught up as one gets in the process of wedding planning, wedding festivities will come and go in the blink of an eye and the rest of our lives will begin. As Lauren kept reminding me during the planning process, all that matters at the end of the day is that you and Dan get married. Everything else is window dressing. Our married life starts now and that's what matters most. Not the color of the tablecloths or the size of the centerpieces. What matters is how we treat each other and what we do with our lives as a married couple and as individuals moving forward. It's hard to believe that four and a half years have passed since Dan and I first met. On one hand, four and a half years has felt like a substantial period of time to me. But on the other hand, I'm always amazed at how fast that time has flown by when I look back at our shared experiences and memories. And what I do know for sure is that meeting you on February 28, 2015 proved to be a pivotal point in my life. Dan, you're one of those people that has the ability to put anyone at ease when you're interacting with others. You're down to earth, empathetic and kind nature with such a breath of fresh air when I first met you. I felt like I finally met someone that was just as sensitive and philosophical of a soul as I was. Someone I could be myself with and also grow with. I admire your intelligence and hunger for knowledge about the world around you. You inspire me to get out of my bubble of knowledge I'm comfortable with and expand my horizons to learn more about the world around me. I admire that you think critically about everything in this life and that you're not afraid to voice your take on things, even if it's an unpopular opinion. Most importantly, you're not stuck to your opinions like most people are. You have this ability to critically reappraise the world around you, no matter the topic, and reconsider your stance. I should have double spaced this. I enjoy having deep conversations with you about every topic under the sun because of this open-mindedness you have to life and the world. I also admire your ability to empathize with and treat individuals of all walks of life with the utmost respect, generosity, and kindness. They say a true test of someone's character is how they treat people that can do nothing for them. It's easy for people in your line of work to become bitter, distrustful, and power hungry. Instead, your actions at work and elsewhere are nothing short of admirable. You give people the benefit of the doubt and treat those that are seen as less than human by society with the same respect you give your friends and family. I'm so proud to be married to someone who has a heart of gold and a character that many people can only aspire to develop in their lifetime. You hear people say opposites attract all the time. I don't completely agree. I think similarities in core values and beliefs are important in a relationship. And a certain amount of common interests and hobbies can also help bring two people together. Although for the most part, we grew up in Canada, both of us experienced life in other countries when we were kids. Both of our families immigrated twice when we were little. We both felt different growing up for our own unique reasons, but also partly because we were both trying to make sense of our family's culture in the greater context of Canadian culture. As a result, I don't think it's an accident that we had a common understanding when we first met. Our similar trajectories in life is what provided us with this common understanding. 
We each had the opportunity to immerse ourselves in North American culture early on in life, but we didn't forget the roots that we came from. Experiencing life in other cultures and countries changes your perspective on certain things. For you and I, Dan, I think it fostered a strong sense of acceptance and open-mindedness about various people, cultures, and events. Ultimately, it fostered an understanding that regardless of where in the world one comes from, we are all human and have the same core desires in life. On a superficial level, you and I come from, a vastly, different, from vastly different cultures, but on a human level, we are very similar. Something else we have in common is our straightforward nature. We were both very open with each other about what we wanted out of our budding relationship when we first met. We both wanted a serious relationship, valued marriage and children, and were comfortable with being vulnerable with each other. These commonalities simplified our relationship and it made things easy. There was no guessing or worrying. We each knew that the other was just as committed and that we had each other's backs no matter what. This fostered loyalty very, very early on in our relationship and I'm so grateful for it. Your loyalty and commitment to us, Dan, helped me get through some of the hardest times in my life. My internship when I was studying to be a dietitian is a great example of that. I would not have been able to complete my internship without your support. Without you, I would not have even made it to some of my practicums. You drove six hours with my belongings just to help me move to one of my placements in Medicine Hat. And you drove the same distance multiple times just to visit me. Most importantly, you believed in my abilities even when I doubted myself going through internship. Thank you for always being there for me and literally going the extra mile, no matter the challenges life throws our way. On a less serious note, I think it's awesome I can listen to Taylor Swift with you, knowing that you're enjoying the music just as much as I am. I still think back to her trips to Banff and Jasper, singing along to T-Swift's albums. And speaking of trips, I'm happy I've married someone that is just as excited to travel the world as I am. I know we haven't had the opportunity to travel to many places together yet, but I'm sure you and I will change that in the coming years, and I look forward to it. We also share the same love for animals. We both wanted pets so badly as children, and it meant a lot to me to adopt Saffron with you. Saffron is a very lovable cat, for those of you that may not know. Unfortunately, he couldn't join us for the wedding festivities in Ontario. Um, we can watch funny animal videos together and laugh till we cry, and it never gets old. You can talk about pandas for 20 minutes straight. Samia is aware of that, and I love that about you. <laughs> Going back to the saying opposites attract, I think certain differences between two people can help balance a relationship. Your calm approach to most things in life balances out my more high-strung nature, whereas my organizer and planner self balances out the procrastinator in you. You're also more open to taking risks, which pushes me out of my comfort zone, and I reel you back in when you've pushed the envelope too far. I think a successful marriage requires both individuals to choose to love the other, even when they don't like the other person in a given moment or situation. Love is not the feeling of happiness and excitement when you first meet someone you like. Love is an active decision you make every day to be there for the other person despite their flaws and insecurities and despite disagreements. I tru truly believe that. In addition to our vows that we've said earlier today, I wanted to write out my promises to you here, Dan. I promise to be your best friend. I promise to stay patient and calm when we have disagreements. I promise to be a good listener to never lose my humility and compassion, to help you in achieving your goals and aspirations, to keep a sense of humor in all of our future endeavors, adventures together, to stay loyal to you physically, emotionally, and spiritually, be completely open and honest with you, express my love not only through words but also actions, entertain your DIY ideas, give you space when you want alone time, Support your passions, interests, and hobbies. Let you sleep. That's a common theme. Love your family as though they were my own. Remind you of all the good that there is in this world. Be a loving and supportive mother to our future children. Be there for you on both your darkest and brightest days. And love you every day of our lives together. You will always be my person, even if you are shorter.
ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, beautiful. You can tell the amount of love these two people share. And can we please give it up one more time for this lovely couple?